Hello students. Today, the topic that we'll be covering in this lecture is CPU scheduling. This is a part of the subject operating system that we complete in the BTEC CSC program in the second year. The topic that we will be covering in this session, in this lecture, is the basic concept of CPU scheduling. What are the various scheduling criteria? Uh, under the topic scheduling algorithms, today I will be discussing only one algorithm, that is first come first serve. And also we will be discussing two different types of scheduling, that is preemptive and non-preemptive scheduling. So after discussing this topic, rest of the scheduling algorithms will be covered in the next sessions. So let's start with the CPU scheduling. What is CPU scheduling? So basically the CPU scheduling is the task performed by the CPU that decides the way the way the and the order in which the process will be executed. So what we want to say that suppose we are having different processes, the process P1, P2, P3, P4, we are having four different processes and we have to decide that which particular process will be executed first. And after completing P1, which is the next process that will be assigned the CPU, that will be assigned the processor and that particular process is going to complete its task. So CPU scheduling will be deciding, it is the algorithm which is going to select the process which will be assigned to the processor, which will be assigned to the CPU to get executed and finally uh, to obtain the desired outcome, whatever that particular program, that particular process is designed for and the order in which the rest of the processes will be assigned to the CPU. So as we, as we have discussed, there are two types of CPU scheduling. First is preemptive and the other one is non-preemptive scheduling. We will be discussing these two topics in the later part of this lecture. So before going forward to, uh, to the CPU scheduling criteria and algorithm, let, let us discuss that what is a process because as we can see here that CPU scheduling is deciding the way and the order in which the processes will be executed. So first we need to understand that what is a process and why it is required to design a particular way and the order in which these processes will be executed. So as we can define that a process is essentially just a set of instructions or a program in the execution. Right. Uh, so we can take an example that whenever you want to search something on the Internet, right, you want to search for CPU scheduling in operating system. What you do, you start the browser, you open the Chrome, write the Google, google.com. And what is then in the search bar, you write the uh, type that what is CPU scheduling? What is the importance of CPU scheduling or any other topic which you want to search? So what you are doing, you are opening the browser or we can say a Chrome to search for a particular topic. So the opening of the uh, browser or we can say the opening of the Chrome is to initiate or start a particular process. So Chrome is a process. Similarly, if you want to video, watch a video, you can open the VLC player or the media player. So this is a process which our CPU is assigned to complete a particular task using that particular process. For v uh, VLC, or media player, the CPU will be presenting or displaying the video and the audio of a particular movie which we are watching. For a uh, Chrome, we are opening the Google. So it is uh, the Chrome is designed to open a Google web page. And then on that web page, we will be typing something. And then it is going to present us the outcome of the search yeah, or outcome of our search, whatever we have uh, instructed the browser or instructed the google.com to do. Right, so a process is a set of instructions or a program in execution. Chrome is a process. So what happens with a process? A process comes in a job queue. Right, from that job queue, it is transferred to the ready queue. 
when that process is ready to get executed when that process is ready to give the desired outcome that process is transferred to the ready queue from the ready queue the cpu selects that particular process in a particular order in a particular manner based on the incoming time of that process based on the priority defined by the user or any other criteria right so based on different criteria the process is selected from the ready queue and the cpu is assigned to that particular process it can also happen that due to some interruption due to some interrupt due to some call due to some priority it can happen that a particular process that was getting ex executed through the cpu has to go back to the ready queue or the waiting queue because some higher priority process is waiting in the ready queue and we have to assign we have to complete that process on higher priority right so from the cpu from the assigned cpu the uh, from running state the C, the process can also get back to the waiting queue and from that waiting queue it can again come back to the ready queue and get executed until the particular process ends its desired end its particular task or the user gets the desired outcome what is that whatever that particular process is designed to do so we can also state that we have a processes that comes from the job queue to the ready queue as we have discussed in this uh, ready queue is basically the primary memory primary memory means ram that are one by one in some manner given resources in some manner and given the type of the resources they require then their execution is completed right so the process comes in a job queue from job queue it is transferred to the ready queue and from ready queue the primary the cpu is allocated to that particular process it can come back to the ready queue through waiting queue or it can complete its task depending upon the resource and the manner in which it is getting executed so the procedure of scheduling the processes the uh, scheduling these processes from ready queue to cpu to waiting queue and again to the ready queue before completing that particular process ya yeah, before completing its desired task is known as the cpu scheduling so this is the pro cpu scheduling is basically the procedure of scheduling the process in the cpu so next next topic that we will be covering is the scheduling criteria so why scheduling criteria is important or what are the important criteria that uh, on the basis of which the cpu schedules the processes in the ready queue right so first criteria that is uh, is uh, the first criteria is cpu utilization basically cpu utilization means uh, keeping the cpu busy as busy as possible right if we are having a ram of 8 gb we will try to execute as much as as much as processes until the cpu gets hang or the system is hang or there is some error in that particular part right so basically when uh, the number of processes we can schedule depends on the cpu utilization then how much processes we can use to get cpu 100% utilized next is throughput throughput is the process that completes their execution per unit of time so throughput what does throughput means that the number of processes that completes their execution in a per unit of time how fast our cpu is working how many processes the cpu completes in a particular time turnaround time this is the third criteria the amount of time to execute a particular process right so suppose a p1 is p1 enters the cpu enters the ready queue at time 0 and it gets executed at time 24 so turn around time of p1 is 0 to 24 right so the amount of time to execute a particular process waiting time this is the fourth criteria the amount of time a process has been waiting in the ready queue next response time the amount of time it takes when a request was submitted until the first response is produced not the outcome output right for example uh, the p1 uh, process p1 enters at time 0 and the cpu is allocated to that process at time 1 so the first response time whenever the process gets the cpu is for p1 it is 1 
सो रिस्पॉन्स टाइम ऑफ द पी वन इज वन फर्स्ट टाइम वेन एवर दी पी यू इज एलोकेटेड टू दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोसेस इज नोन एज द रिस्पॉन्स टाइम सो द क्राइटेरियाज दीज आर द फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट क्राइटेरियाज ऑन दीज फाइव क्राइटेरिया सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग डिपेंड्स नाउ आउट ऑफ दीज फाइव क्राइटेरिया देर आर सम क्राइटेरिया फॉर विच वी हैव टू वर्क फॉर मैक्सिमाइजेशन ऑफ दोज क्राइटेरिया एंड फॉर सम क्राइटेरिया वी हैव टू मिनिमाइज द टाइम राइट लेट्स डिसाइड दैट वट आर द क्राइटेरिया फॉर विच वी हैव टू मैक्सिमाइज एंड फॉर विच वी हैव टू मिनिमाइज सो फॉर मैक्सिमाइजेशन वी हैव टू वर्क फॉर सीपीयू यूटिलाइजेशन एंड थ्रू कुट we have to maximize the utilization of the cpu as i have already discussed that we have to work in utilizing the cpu to 100% similarly throughput means the maximum number of processes the cpu completes in a particular <coughs> duration right so this also we have to uh, complete the number of we have to increase the number of processes which we want to complete in a particular duration will improve the throughput of the efficiency and the throughput of our process next is minimize so we need to minimize the turnaround time waiting time and the response time of the cpu next topic is the scheduling algorithm so in this lecture we will be covering the only one scheduling algorithm that is first come first serve fcfs scheduling algorithm so let's assume that there are three different processes p1 p2 and p3 these processes are waiting in the ready queue to get executed the completion time for process p1 is 24 completion time for process p2 is 3 and completion time for process p3 is 3 right we need to assign cpu or we need to assign processor to these particular processes in an order to maximize their throughput and minimize their turn around waiting and response time so suppose that the processes arrives in the order p1 p1 arrives first first then p2 arrives second and at third place p3 arrives right so as the name suggests first come first serve that means whichever process arrives first will be executed first right so the order in which the processes are coming is p1 p2 p3 let's design the gantt chart for this schedule is at p not we only have one process that is p1 right so p1 will be allocated the cpu after p1 is allocated the second process that comes to the ready queue is p2 but p1 is having the cpu and it will get completed at time 24 right so till 0 to 24 p1 will be executed it will hold the it will hold the cpu it will hold the processor and after completing its execution after completing its task it will release the cpu when it release the cpu we are having two processes p2 and p3 in the ready queue so as p1 p2 arrives first so the next process that will be getting the cpu is p2 so next we will be allocating the processor to the process p2 at 24 it will get completed in 3 seconds or 3 unit of time so it will hold the cpu for 3 unit of time so it will release the cpu at 27 next process that comes is p3 so p3 also holds the cpu for 3 unit of time so it will hold from 27 to 30 let's calculate the waiting time waiting time for process p0 is 0 as soon as the process comes in the Uh, ready queue it is get execute it get executed because this is the first process that is in the ready queue and cpu will be allocated to this particular process so the waiting time for process p1 is 0 p2 arrives after p1 and it gets the cpu it gets the hold of the cpu at time 24 so it waits for 
24 unit of time. So the waiting time of P2 is 24. Next, P3. P3 arrives after P2 and it gets the hold of the CPU at 27. That means till 27, it is waiting in the ready queue. So the waiting time for the process P3 is 27. Average waiting time for these three processes is 0 plus 24 plus 27 divided by 3. So it is 17. The average waiting time for each process is 17 unit of time. So this is how the first come first serve process or scheduling algorithm works. Whichever process comes first will be allocated the CPU. It will get, get executed until and unless it's completed its task. After completing the desired outcome, the process releases the CPU and the CPU is ready to be allocated to the next process, whichever is in the ready queue. <coughs> Suppose the process arrives in the order. Let's change the order of the process. P2 arrives first, then P3 and then P1, right? In this we have P1, P2, P3, right? And we, now we have changed the order of the processes that is P2, P3 and P1. So the Gantt chart for the scheduled processes, first P2 is in the process and P2 will be allocated to the CPU. So P2 requires three unit of time to get executed. So P, P2 will hold the CPU at time zero and it will release the CPU at time three. After 3, the CPU is allocated to the next process that is P3. So P3 will be allocated CPU at time 3 and it will hold the CPU until it gets completed its task. That means it releases the CPU at time 6. After completing the P3, the last process that is P1 which is waiting in the uh, ready queue will, will be allocated the CPU. So it will hold the CPU at time 6 and it will get executed. To complete its task, it requires total 24 unit of time. So it will release the CPU at time 30. So let's calculate the waiting time for process P1. So for process P1, the average wait, sorry, the waiting time for process P1 is 6 because the process P1 is allocated the CPU at 6 unit of time. So waiting time for process P1 is 6. Waiting time for process P2, as soon as the process comes in the CPU, it gets executed. P2 get executed uh, in the CPU, right? It is allocated the processor to this particular process. So the waiting time for this particular process P2 is 0. Next process is P3. P3 waits until the P2 gets executed. P2 completes its desired task. So P3 waits till the time. 3. So the waiting time of process P3 is 3. So we can say that the average waiting time of these three process is 6 plus 3 plus 0 plus 3. That is divided by 3. That is 3. It is much better than the previous case. So in the previous case, we have 17. Average waiting time was 17. And convey effect short process behind the lo long process. So basically what we want to say that First, uh, first come first of scheduling. If we assign the process, that short process first, and then after completing the short process, the CPU should be allocated to the longer processes. This will give a better result for first come first of scheduling algorithms. <coughs> Next is preemptive and non preemptive scheduling. So preemptive scheduling, preemptive scheduling is basically, let's take an example that there are four processes P0, P1, P2, P3, right? And their arrival time is also given P1 arrives at three and it co get completes its process in two unit of time. P1 arrives at two. So P1 arrives at 2 and it gets executed at 4 unit of time. P2 arrives at 0 and it takes 6 unit of time to get completed. P3 arrives at 1 and it takes 4 unit of time to get completed. Right? 
so what we can see that the process p2 arrives at zero so first process that is in the memory that is in the ready queue is process p1 sorry p2 p2 arrives at zero so p2 will be allocated the memory at first right but what happens at one unit of time p3 arrives p2 get executed for one uh, for one unit of time then the p3 arrives the completion time for p2 still five unit is left it has completed one unit of time to get completed and still five units is remaining now the next process that is in the part of the that is in the uh, ready queue is p3 and it requires only four unit of time so this is the shortest process what we can do we can reallocate the cpu we can send the process p2 in the waiting queue and reallocate the cpu to process p3 based on the criteria that the shortest job will be processed first so we have deallocated the cpu from process p2 at time 1 and reallocated it to process p3 right to get completed what happens next p1 arrives at you two unit of time and it needs four unit to get completed right but still but as we can see that p1 has already completed its one unit of time and it reaches to the next that is three it requires only three unit to get completed so the shortest job is uh, in the ready queue is p3 only because it needs three unit of time PT still requires five unit and P1 arrives, but it requires four unit of time to get up completed. So we can assign the CPU to this. We can uh, the CPU can be remained with P3 only, and it keeps on executing. It will release the CPU after completing the desired task. So the next process that is in the queue and that is the shortest process. Till then. The P, uh, till the time the P3 get executed, get completed, there are all the three processes are in the ready queue. So P0 arrives at 3 and it needs 2 unit of time to complete. P1 arrives at 2 and it needs 4 unit of time. P2, P2, P2 was arrived at 0, but still it requires 5 unit of time to get completed. Right. So now we have to select the second smallest shortest job which will be get executed next and which will complete its task in the minimum time. So the next job that will be selected is P0 as P0 requires only two unit of time to get completed. So the CPU is allocated to P0. P0 completes its task. It was assigned the CPU at 5 and it will release the CPU at 7 after completing the task. Now two jobs are in the CPU that is P1 and P2. P1 needs CPU for four unit of time. P2 needs CPU for five unit of time. So the next job that is shortest is P1 and the CPU is allocated to P1 at seven. It will complete its task in five unit of time and release the CPU at 11. Similarly, the last process will be allocated the CPU at 11 and it will complete its task at 16 right after the desired time the completion time the burst time that is defined by the process so what happened in this then whenever a new process whenever a new process comes in the ready queue with a higher priority priority can be anything here the priority is the shortest job right so based on the priority of the user based on the criteria of the user if a new job comes first and that job completes that that particular process fulfills the criteria defined by the user it will be allocated the processes and for that allocation the cpu has to be deallocated from the currently process currently working process current currently executing process that process will be transferred to the waiting queue and from that waiting queue it will again come back to the ready queue and wait for the uh, wait for the CPU to get executed, right? 
so this is preemptive basically what preemptive says that we can allocate and reallocate the cpu we can shift the cpu between various processes based on the certain criteria based on the certain priorities <clears throat> non preemptive non what non preemptive says that if the cpu is allocated to a particular process it will remain with that particular process until and unless that will get executed right so suppose the p2 as shown in this particular figure the p2 arrives at zero so it and at zero there is only one process in the cpu that is p2 in the ready queue that is p2 so the process p2 will be allocated the cpu or the processor as soon as it gets the right of the uh, cpu it will start its execution and after completing the desired task after completing the desired outcome it will release the cpu so the time required to complete this particular process p2 is 6 so it will release the cpu at time 6 right at 6 we have three different processes in the memory at 1 uh, p3 arrives at 2 p1 arrives and at 3 p not arrives so we are having three different processes in the memory as soon as the p2 release the cpu now we have to select the process which completes its task in the shortest duration so the pro next process that is so basically in this scan chart what we can see that the next process that is allocated the based on the arrival time based on the arrival time the next process that comes in the ready queue is p3 so the process that will be having the right of the cpu after p2 completes its task is p3 p3 completes its execution in 4 unit of time and releases the cpu at 10 next process after p2 p3 the process that comes in the memory is p2 so next after p3 p2 is allocated based on the arrival time right so based on the arrival time p1 is allocated at 10 and it gets completed its task at 4 right and releases the cpu at 14 unit of time at last p not is assigned the cpu and get completed in two unit of time and this is the gantt chart so basically what happens in non preemptive that whenever a pre C a process is having the right a process is having the hold of the cpu it will come it will not release the cpu it will not uh, as reassign the cpu until and unless it completes its particular task but opposite is the case of preemptive whenever a high priority process comes the a cpu is released from the currently working process and reassign that uh, cpu to the priority high priority job after completing the cpu is again assigned from the as uh, again assigned to the processes that are waiting in the ready queue so here are the basic parameters based on which the preemptive and non preemptive scheduling is compared so the parameters first is basic uh, in preemptive cpu are allocated to the process for a limited time right as soon as the high priority process comes the cpu is um, taken from that particular process and reallocated to some other process in non preemptive once resource are allocated to the process the process holds it till it completes its burst time or switches to the waiting state interrupt process can be interrupted in between process cannot be interrupted in between until it terminates itself or its time is over right starvation starvation uh, does not have happen in uh, starvation happens in the preemptive because if a process having high priority frequently arrives in the ready queue low priority processes may be starved similarly in non preemptive if a process with a long burst time is running the later coming process with less burst time less completion time may starve right so starvation can happen in both the cases preemptive and non preemptive overhead it has overhead of scheduling processes it does not have overhead flexibility preemptive is more flexible as compared to non preemptive non preemptive is basically rigid cost uh, cost 
there is cost associated with the preemptive scheduling as we have to shift a particular process from ready queue to in uh, waiting queue to again back to the ready queue whereas as soon as the process is allocated to the cpu in non preemptive it will get executed completed starts and will be sent out of the scheduling queue so there is no extra cost associated with the non preemptive scheduling cpu utilization in preemptive scheduling utilization is high in non preemptive scheduling utilization is low examples of non preemptive schedule uh, preemptive scheduling is round robin and shortest remaining time first whereas example of the non preemptive scheduling is first come first serve and shortest job first so that is all for today's session the lecture was prepared using the book operating system concept by galvin so you can refer this book to go with the content of the lecture recorded today thank you